Today we're going to talk about asymmetrical bending or asymmetrical bending of beams. This is of enormous importance in skeletal structures. Uh, we're going to use, the date today is the 21st of July 2009 and my name is Carl Ross of the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom. We're going to use this angle bar here to demonstrate asymmetrical bending. This is the asymmetrical bending experiment and there we see the cross section of an angle bar which is loaded over this pulley here and we will show you how this behaves under symmetrical and unsymmetrical load. If we load this beam parallel to the vertical angle bar you see how it deforms unsymmetrically. If we change the axis of bending of this angle bar by 90 degrees and load it like this, you can see that bending is unsymmetrical. If we turn this axis of bending by 45 degrees, we get the minor principal axis of bending. And you can see how easily it deflects and also that it deflects symmetrically. If we turn this axis of bending by 90 degrees to the minor principal axis of bending, we get the major principal axis of bending, which bends symmetrically, but is much stiffer. It doesn't deform as much, because that's bending about the major principal axis of bending. If we calculate the second bone's area about the x-axis and the y-axis, the second bone's area are always positive. In addition to this, we have to calculate the product of inertia, which can be negative. If we calculate this, then we could calculate the second moment of area from certain formulae about the principal axis of bending. Now, in my opinion, the best way to calculate the second moment of area about the x and y axes is using the tabular method, because the tabular method allows you to use a spreadsheet. The tabular method is described in my books, Mechanics of Solids, and also in Strength of Material and Structures by Case Chilburn Ross. If you are analyzing a rigid jointed space frame using a computer package like ANSYS or NASPRAN, you need to know the, uh, the plane of bending, which is defined by I, J, and K. I is the node at the bottom of that angle bar, J is the node at the top, and K is, defines the principal axis of bending. So it's a triangular plane which defines the principal axis of bending. And if you do that, you've got to get the right principal axis of bending with the right plane. So in addition to feeding in the IJK plane of bending, you've got to feed in the principal second moment of area by the two axes and also the torsional constant. The torsional constant can be approximated by the formula Bt cubed on 3, where B is the length of one of those legs of angle bar, and T is the thickness, and you've got to multiply that by 2, because there are two legs of an angle bar. If you are doing a linear analysis of uh, a rigid jointed space frame, you might find the stresses are reasonable, and you might think it's safe, but be careful, because if you've got a slender member in compression, it can buckle. I'll demonstrate that to you by this little uh, flexi beam here. You can see it's slightly out of straight. If I put it in tension, the out of straightness decreases and it's very strong, incredibly strong. If I put it in compression, then the out of straightness increases and it buckles easily at a very low, low, very low. This is buckling when a slender member is in compression and be careful of that because the structure could collapse due to nonlinear analysis. So uh, buckling is, you've got to be very careful with skeletal structures, but a, a member will buckle. And uh, I would ad advise generally a, uh, a novice not to analyze a skeletal structure with slightly to buckle, because you've got to use nonlinear analysis, including material and geometrical nonlinearity.